And a new report from the New York Federal Reserve shows credit card delinquency is on the rise. 18% of borrowers are maxing their credit cards out completely. The report finding younger Americans are maxing out their balances at a higher rate, with over 15% of Gen Z, 12% of millennials pushing the limit of their credit cards. News Nation's Elizabeth Pran is here to break it all down. Good morning, Elizabeth. There are a lot of eye-popping numbers in this report. Yeah, this was really startling, Hannah, when we started to do a little bit of digging and do some research. There's a large population of Americans who are really drowning in credit card debt. So the New York Federal Reserve said about one-fifth are maxed out. I want to repeat that. One-fifth of borrowers are maxed out. So what does it mean to be maxed out? Well, if you look at the definition, it means that if you are a cardholder or perhaps you have a loan, you're using at least 90% of your credit limit. Like you said, who is really most, I guess, egregious here? We would say uh, those who are under 30 and low-income neighborhoods, people in low-income neighborhoods, according to this report. But if you look at household debt, that's up about 1.1%. That's 100. $84 billion in just the first quarter of this year. So where are they seeing uh, really people hurting the most? Late payments are both to credit card companies and to auto loan providers. So if you take a step back and look at the startling, start, uh, startling figures when we look at what the government is spending, so we look at more of a macro view, the Treasury Department says the U.S. government has spent about $855 billion more than it's collected in 2024. And one of the biggest names in really fine Finance. The J.P. Morgan CEO, Jamie Dimon, says we have to reduce the deficit before it is too late. Is some of the economic growth the U.S. is seeing at the moment just because of uh, borrowing? And, yeah. and great yeah, no, that's, a, that's a very good point. The America is spending, we spent a lot of money. And during COVID and after COVID, and our deficit 6% now, that's a lot. But obviously that drives growth. You see him talking to Sky News there. So making a livable wage is seemingly out of reach, really even for someone who on paper is making well above average. So we met a man who makes over three times the poverty line. He's making more than the average household. And he tells us he simply cannot make ends meet. I make 75000 a year as a funeral director, and I can't make it. Can't make it. I mean, it's, it's, it's insane. I, I have to go to food pantries sometimes to... Make money. I never had to do that in my life. Coming from Boston, Massachusetts, uh, being a Democrat, uh, I am definitely not going with Biden. Uh, I've always been afraid of Trump, uh, but um, I'm definitely moving towards Trump. I mean, Hannah, we, we've seen this on social media, right? People saying that they're making really good money. They can't make ends meet. The president told voters that the uh, Inflation Reduction Act would help them. It would reduce the deficit by billions. But what we're seeing is they're, they're still facing these high interest rates. They're still seeing these high prices at the grocery store and things like loans. It's just hard to make ends meet for a lot of people. Yeah, sad reality for so many Americans. Elizabeth, great reporting. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.